Okay, here is another example in which you connect the drain to the gate. So this is the drain and it's connected all the time to the gate. And that's an example of the design, you know, that forces your transistor to work all the time on some region, either saturation or linear. And as we see uh, in a moment now, this transistor with this design of the circuit, you know, is working all the time in some region. So let's see how. So you, uh, it's required here for that example to determine R such, such that VD is equal to 0.8 volt. And ID is, uh, oh, ID is not known, uh, but V threshold is, is known, 0.5, and the KN is 1.6 milliampere uh, volt square. Good. So here we see that the drain and the gate are connected. So the drain and the gate are connected. So VD is equal to VG. If you subtract Vs from both sides, so Vds basically equal to Vgs. Equal to 0.8 in that example. Remember, Vs here is zero. Good. We know that the, or that the region of, of uh, the, the operating region, if we know the relation between Vds and Vgs minus V threshold. We know that Vds is equal to Vgs, okay? So here is VDS and here is VGS. Now they are equal. But how about if we subtract something from VGS from the right hand side? What would be the ratio? Is it still equality? No. At that time, VDS will be larger than VGS minus V threshold. So let's let's give an numerical example. So for example, two is equal to two. But if we subtract one from here, then two will be larger than two minus one, which is one. Okay. So all the time, VDS will be larger than VGS minus V threshold in that specific circuit when you connect the drain to the gate. And based on that, the transistor is in saturation region. all the time. And basically, if you are in saturation region, you know, you know the equation ID equal to half Kn VGS minus V threshold. VGS is basically 0.8 because it's equal to VDS. Let's square here. And Kn is 1.6. And V threshold is 0.5. So basically you can determine ID very easily here. It will be a 0 0.072 milliamperes. And I is flowing in that direction. So ID basically equal to 1.8 minus VD, which is 0.8 over R 1.8 minus 0.8 over R. So from that R equal to 13.88 kilo ohms. Very nice. Let's have another example as well. Example four. That's also a nice example. So again, design the circuit to establish a drain voltage of 0.1. So the voltage at the drain here is 0.1 and again, Vs is equal to zero. So Vds is equal to 0.1 as well. So first find R D. That's what's meant by design the circuit. Then what is the effective resistance between drain and the source? at this operating point. And v, VTH or V threshold is equal to one volt and the gain is equal to one milliampere volt squared. Good, so we have two questions. First RD and then find the effective resistance between the drain and source. So 
we will consider here, you know, the transistor as a resistance. What is this transistor uh, resistance? Good. So let's take it step by step. So first, let's look at the. We need to know which operating region we are in. We we find that the gate is connected to VDD. So VG is equal to VDD. And here, you know, in, in these circuits, the upper voltage, the ball, the ball of voltage is, is called VDD because it's connected usually to the drain. In VGT, it's called VCC because it's usually connected to the collector. Okay? Equal to five volt. And the VD is equal to point one. VDS equal to point one. VGS is equal to five. So basically, this is less than VGS, and of course, less than VGS minus V threshold. And also, less than VGS minus V threshold, VGS is five and V threshold is, is, is one. So this is four, and of course, the point one is less than four. And based on that, we are working in the linear region. So ID equal to Kn, which is known, VGS minus V threshold. VGS is not known. Oh, I'm sorry, it's known also equal to five. I'm sorry. VDS, which is also known, point one minus half VDS square. So everything on the right hand side is known. So we can determine ID, it will be. Uh, 0.395 uh, milliamperes. Now we can determine RD easily. So RD equal to 5 minus VD over ID. 5 minus VD is 0.1. And ID, we just got it 395 milliamperes. So this will give us 12.4 kilo ohms. That's good. Now it's it asked you to find the effective resistance between. So for any element, any element, its effective resistance is the voltage, at its voltage drop across the current that flows through it. So the effective resistance, the N MOS effective resistance equal to its voltage drop, VDS, over the current that flows through it, which is ID. So VDS is 0.1. And uh, the current is 0.395. So it will be equal to 253 ohms. Very small, of course. Very small resistance. Good. The last example, it's a little bit, you know, more complex, but still easy. Because guys, we, 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 the new thing here is that we have new equations, but same concepts add, uh, as BGT transistors, you know? So in that example here, analyze the circuit should determine the voltages at all nodes and the currents as well, so all branches, V threshold one volt, K is one milliampere volt square. So basically it asks you to find the ID, let's be more specific, ID, VDS, and VGS. Good. Before we continue, Let's go back to the structure of the NMOS. The NMOS, you have a capacitance, so the gate, then insulator, then the B-type. And when you have a voltage larger than uh, V-threshold, you will have, you know, strong invergences. There is a region, the channel will be, there will be a channel of N type. And a current can flow, that's good. But how much current flows from the gate into the transistor? 
So we know always that the current drain from the source to the drain or the drain to the source, you know, the conventional way. But how about the current that flows from the gate into the transistor, the perpendicular one? Remember, it's a capacitance, right? It's a capacitance. You have insulators there, the oxide. So all the time, the IG or the current of the gate is equal to zero. So the current through the gate, IG, all the time equal to any most transistor you, the current through the gate is zero. So basically, these two transistors are series. So RG1 are G2 is in series. So VG1 equal to 10 volt, which is VDD, multiplied by RG1 over RG1 plus RG2. And of course, they are equal. So the voltage will be divided equally. So this is equal to 5 volt. So the voltage here is 5 volt. And let's call this V gate, not VG1, <laughs> or VRG1. The voltage here is VG. Well, this is VG. Good. So let's make a loop here. What do we have in that loop? We have this voltage, which is, v, which is VG. We have this voltage, which is ID RS. Remember, ID is flowing through the transistor from VD to zero to ground. And we have VGS here. Remember, this is VGS, something like VBE there in VGT transistors. So from that loop, from loop one, you have VG, which is equal to five, equal to VGS, which is unknown, plus ID, and RS is six, uh, six kilo ohms. So five equal to VGS plus six ID. Good. This is an equation in two unknowns. So we need another equation. We need another equation. In this particular circuit, we cannot know uh, in advance which region the transistor is working in. You know, it's different from other circuits. So whatever you do here, you cannot know that. So we go back to what we were doing in BGD. We assume a region. And so at the, we look at the numbers, you know, if the numbers, you know, if the number is this, uh, matches our assumptions then, or our expectations from that assumption, then the, the assumption is correct and we just continue. Otherwise, we just go back and assume another. We have two options here, two ways. If one way is wrong, then we go to the other way. So usually you assume, like there you assume active first, here we assume saturation first, so assume the transistor is in saturation region. And remember, saturation region is, is, uh, is similar to the active region of VGT. Don't mix again, okay? So if, you, if we assume so, ID will be equal to half Kn VGS minus V threshold square. Now we have two equations into unknown because everything here is unknown as well. And number two, this is number one, and this is number two. So these are two equations and two unknowns. ID and VGS. Good. 
So if we you know combine them together, because these are nonlinear equations again. So from here we know that ID equal to uh, five over six minus DGS over six. So we just get this and put it in that equation here. So we will get half VGS square minus 0.833 VGS minus 0.333 equal to zero. This is a quadratic equation has two roots. The first root is VGS equal to two and the second root is VGS equal to uh, minus three three. You know, this, is, this guy is just like a VBE. You can't have a minus on it. So you can't, if the, if the, transistor, if the transistor is on, you can't have VGS minus, you can't have v, uh, DS minus. So this is, you know, rejected automatically. So our VGS is just a two. It will be by the way, 1.999. So just if, if you calculate it by yourself on a computer or something, uh, but of course 1.999 is just two. So we get VGS. So we can calculate ID, ID equal to 0.5 milliamperes. And if you calculate ID, you can calculate v, VS. So if we look here, so VS is just the voltage across RS. So VS is equal to ID RS. It will be equal to three volts. We can calculate also VD. So VD is equal to 10 minus ID RD. So the voltage across RD is that way. So 10 minus ID RD, 10 minus ID RD. So it will be uh, seven volt. So VGS is two. And now VDS is seven minus three is four. And remember you check VDS here, four. VGS here is two. And two we will subtract from it uh, VGS, V threshold, which is one. This is one. And basically VDS is larger than one. So you are really in saturation region. Okay, so guys, these are five examples, you know, that really, you know, uh, covers uh, most of the aspects of DC, DC, so, uh, DC uh, circuits of uh, NMOS. Uh, next time we will take BMOS, which is like B and B transistors, you know, in BGT again. I make all of that analogy, you know, to know that we are in the same space, we are in the same uh, topics but with different devices, okay? But there are very, uh, very, uh, you know, huge similarity, similarity we can say between both, at least in the concepts of how to solve a circuit, okay? So next time we're gonna take BMOS and we're gonna explore, you know, uh, the first amplifier, which was called common source amplifier, which is again, like common emitter amplifier in BGTs, okay? So thank you very much and have a nice day, bye-bye.